do, 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 do. <gasps> Bud, what have you done to my bookshelf? You knocked over all of my video games. Ugh, if only I had a device I could put on this bookshelf to try and stop Bud from doing this. Ah, you think cuteness will save you. I was born with cuteness, molded by it. I didn't know what ugly was until I was nearly a man. I'll show you, bud. I'll create a device that'll keep you away from the bookshelf. Ow! Something must be done. It's time for Operation Cat Book. Not Blue Book, like with the aliens. All right, so the problem is, Bud, the cute cat, knocks books off my bookshelf. And he does it on purpose, so I go out there and say, no! And then he doesn't understand English, so as far as he's concerned, I'm saying, love! What do they say? Your cat is training you. So, here's a thought. I don't know if it'll work, but it might be a fun project. Because I've been meaning to build some cat projects. Make like a fake book. Maybe make it like laser cut case. Um, maybe put like some LEDs on the side, like bright white LEDs and flash them. <clears throat> I don't know if a cat would find it annoying, but they probably would find a piezo speaker at the right frequency annoying. And I've got some vibration sensors. <laughs> Bud, you're interrupting me as I make a video that is meant to thwart you. Piezo, then we'll slap in a lipo. You always see me pulling those from projects. And then the can sensor, I think maybe have like a sensor and then put that on a stalk so it's extra prone to vibration. Then a microcontroller and probably like a MOSFET. Do we need a MOSFET? Yeah, actually we could use a MOSFET because then we could turn everything off. We could put this thing into sleep mode and that LiPo battery would run it in idle mode for probably years. Would it last for 16 to 17 years, bud? What happens in 16 to 17 years? <laughs> You'll find out. How old will I be? Man, yeah, I might still have Bud when I'm in my 60s. Because <laughs> I'm 46. I know I don't look it, but I feel old, like butter scraped over too much bread. There were some vibration sensors involved. Now, these are just mechanical vibration sensors. Well, I wonder how sensitive it is. Let's uh, hook up the... What's this thing called? The multimeter? The multimeter. <laughs> the, it's a... Hey... If you're in an airplane, do you say, oh, look, an altimeter? No, you say an altimeter or a speedometer or an odometer. You don't say odometer. Odometer would be how you would test the uh, performance of your space station constable. What the heck? It's just constantly on. Eh, I don't really like these. Let's see if I can scrounge one of the other ones. Yeah, here we go. These work a little better. It's just a little metal can with a thin wire, and when it vibrates, it closes the circuit. What we can use, what we can do with this is we can use this to trigger an interrupt on a microcontroller, and that can then that can create our cat distraction device. So if we make this roughly book shaped, how many? What is like four? Do they have? No, don't they technically have? Yeah, they technically have an opposable thumb. So when the Lion King. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. Oh, that's not a good way to draw fur. So when he tries to pull it off the shelf, because I assume he does like this. Yeah, hopefully that would make this trigger. Will it make a noise and scare him before he tips it over? Hey, that's my favorite rag. I've got some two wire serial RGB LEDs here. These aren't the same as NeoPixels. These actually have clock and data, which makes them much easier to drive. Actually, I do have more of these if I pulled them off of my pinball test rig. Are you trying to get back in here? I guess I don't really need them anymore because I know the code works. Oh, there we go. This will make a lot of light. Yes. <laughs> we'll just dump a ton of current through it. All right, so that's the inputs on that side. Bud, you are in needy mode. Oh, he just goes through all these phases like clockwork. I guess it is like literally clockwork because it depends on the time of day. Yeah, so this could be on the spine of the fake book. Ben Hickendorn, he wrote the book on cat deterrence. Assuming it works. There's a nice large flat speaker. Oh yeah, this will work nicely. 
I'm going to use one of these adapters. I buy these from, uh, what's that website called? Marlon P. Jones and Associates. I think it's down in Florida. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll remember to put a link below. Today we're going to be using the new Atmel Tiny Zero Series microcontroller. I've used these on a couple projects. I think, what was the badge? The badge, the uh, MGC badge, I believe, was a 1612? These are a new line of, well, tiny microcontrollers. I guess it's kind of self-explanatory. From Atmel. They have much better peripheral support than the old tiny microcontroller. And by much better, I mean some. Why do I suddenly get this feeling in the back of my head like I'm building some sort of wily coyote contraption that's only going to fail? Ben, you could solve all of these problems by getting a second cat. Never! Then I'll become a crazy cat man. I'll be like, Ooh, I'm crazy cat man. Oh, look at my cat children. And then I'll like start knitting them sweaters and stuff. Here's our AT Tiny 202 chip. It's got eight pins. Obviously, we've got voltage and ground, so we'll probably have voltage coming in here, have a capacitor to ground there. Just probably just run it right off the battery. It should be fine. Ground goes to ground. PA3, that's going to be the clock. That's part of the spy bus. So that's going to connect to the clock. So we're going to have our... Well, they're not NeoPixels. I always want to say NeoPixels, but they're not. Same thing, you got VCC, ground, clock, and data. The I.O. multiplexing consideriza considerations? Considerations. Uh, let's see, a master out, slave in. That's PA1. Okay. So this one is data. So that connects over here. Now, on this particular microcontroller, you can't disable MISO, master in, slave out. Um, it's uh, On more advanced microcontrollers, you don't have to use... If you configure a block as spy, you can say, okay, well, I only want the clock and the master out slave in. I don't need MISO because I'm not getting any data back. So you can actually use that pin for something else. You can't do that with this one. However, I have discovered that you can use that pin as an input. So even though it's the contents of that pin will be filling the input buffer of the spy bus, we can just ignore it, but we can also use that as an input, such as for our sensor. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So that's MISO, master in slave out, that's PA2. So PA2 will be our vibration sensor. UPDI is a universal programming debug interface. It's pretty nice because you can do it all with one wire. You can also use it to reset the chip, but if you leave it floating, it just, it works. It's got an internal pull-up, so you can leave it floating when you're not programming it. That's another nice thing, because the old uh, AT Tinies, they actually had a spy interface to program, so you had to use three lines. You had to use clock, miso, mosi to program them, which means you had to have considerations like the lines you programmed them with couldn't have peripherals on them that also affected the programmer if you're trying to program it in circuit. Oh, okay, so what? What's that leaves the speaker. Looking at the data sheet, there's two timers available. There's TCA0 and then TCB0. There's a multiplex signal consideration table. Maybe I'll edit it in here that shows where the pins can go. Um, timer TCA0 is connected to the same pins I'm using for the RGB LED, so I can't use that one. That leaves TCB0, which has one output of W0 on PA6. So that's going to be here. And that's going to go to the speaker. So, well, that's not how you draw a speaker in a schematic. But uh, we're going to do this. We're going to have a transistor. World's cheapest speaker. <laughs> yeah. So, W0, 1K resistor, 10K pull down uh, to MPN transistor. 
So when this line goes high, the current will be allowed to sink through the speaker to ground and it'll make noise. It's the dead simplest kind of speaker controller you can do. So uh, it's W0 is connected to a timer so we can we can create whatever frequency we want to find the best anti-bud frequency. There's also a programming header that will be VCC, UPDI, and ground. So let's connect that as well. Um, yeah, that should pretty much be it. Oh yeah, and then for our, our CAN sensor, well, I'll just draw it as a switch. So we got our switch there. I'm gonna do a like a weak pull down and then that'll go to, what was it, PA2? Goes to ground. So when the switch closes, we'll have a rising edge interrupt that'll take us to VCC. Uh, that way it's not drawing current when the switch isn't being closed. Because we want this thing to, this thing should sleep in the microamp range. So we gotta make sure that it is not drawing current when it doesn't need to. Which means we'll also disable the spy peripheral and the uh, input pins when the thing's asleep and then turn them back on when it wakes up. You know who I think one of the smartest players in the streaming wars has been? Sony. They're like, hey, instead of spending billions of dollars on a streaming service that's going to lose money for a couple years at least, why don't we just continue to sell our movies to Netflix? <laughs> to quote War Games, the only way to win is not to play. Oh, and that's what I'll need my last pin for. MOSFET control. How do you draw a MOSFET? It's harder to draw. Well, basically it has drain, source, gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the load of the speakers. So let's say this represents the load of the speakers and the um, and the lights, right? So you're going to have VCC going into that, powering that stuff, and then the ground of that goes into the drain. Gate connects to the FET pin. And then source goes to main ground. Microcontroller wakes up, it activates this MOSFET allowing the speaker and the lights to be powered. Then when the system turns off, it turns off the MOSFET, meaning those things can't possibly draw power because the lights probably would draw a little bit of power even if you're not sending data to them. Even while you would send a bunch of zeros to turn off the lights, but they would still technically be drawing power because they'd be sitting there waiting for something to happen. So that's why I'm gonna put in a MOSFET. And now I'm completely out of I.O. I'm all out of I.O. I'm so lost without it. And the more you tell me to stop singing, the more I'll keep doing it. Ah, oops, I got that backwards. The tab is the drain, not the source. I'm gonna add a header so we can disconnect the RGB LEDs. Probably just make it a little easier to assemble when the time comes. So here's a trick I like to do. I don't know if it's even really a trick. It's just a thing. I'll put down the sticky side of a post-it note. And then I'll use that to label the pins on my perf board. Ground. Clock. Data. VCC. And I just... And I can save the rest for later. All right. Wow, look at these, look at those amazing resistor placements. I've added a transistor here for the speaker. And then we have our separate ground line here, the FET controlled ground line. This hot glue totally won't fail after Bud knocks it off the shelf after it fails. Yeah. I think I'll just use this PCB as the basis for the size of my fake book. The fake book of Bubba Fett. Does Bubba Fett write a book? He's like, I've always wanted to be an author. I'm Bubba Fett. Now, was that civilized? No, clearly not. We're telling all our clients to invest in canned food and shotguns. Let's put the negative of the speaker into the collector of the transistor, and the positive of the speaker will go to our VCC. Ah, I finally got a use for one of these PlayStation 3 batteries. Or maybe it's PlayStation 4. Ah, oh, who knows anymore. Put a toggle switch out the back, and then I'll have my vibration stalk here. This is the highest quality build ever seen on YouTube. I'm working on another YouTuber impression. Uh, maybe once I feel more confident in it, I will share it with you all. Okay, I've got this 
cheap, crappy LiPo charger. I'm just going to hook it up to the battery port so we can charge the battery once a year. Unless this thing is completely useless, in which case it'll just go on the it'll just go on the shelf along with all my other aborted projects. No, I don't I don't always finish everything. You have no idea. You only see the things I finish. Uh, okay, let me plug in this USB cable to a wall wart. This should give us a light. Let's see what we have for juice. At the start, I might need to juice this up a little bit. 3.8, that's not bad. Uh, I think I'll juice it up a little bit and maybe eat some lunch just to make sure the charger's working. Um, I think the last thing to add, well, we need to make a cable for the LEDs, but the last thing to add would be the uh, vibration stalk. Maybe I could use like a pipe cleaner. Like just have a pipe cleaner like hanging in the breeze, like connected there. Let's check this out. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, you can see the vibration. Well, maybe you can't because my eyes have a higher frame rate than this camera. Okay, I glued the can vibration sensor to the edge of the pipe cleaner and meow, meow, meow. I'm Bud, meow, meow. Oh, Ben, let me see if I'm getting this straight. You're ignoring your cat to work on a device that will help you ignore your cat. Oh yes, that's correct. All right, here's a setup. I'm gonna use an Atmel Ice with the plug in the AVR side as opposed to the SAM side. Then we have our, our adapter. And I'm gonna plug it in right here so we can program this board. There we go. All right, let's go to Atmel Studio. Oh, I'm sorry, Microchip Studio. Okay, Microchip Studio. Let's go to New, Executable Project. Let's call this um, Cat Book. The Book of Bubba Cat. Kind of embarrassed that I just said that. ATtiny202. Here's the data sheet for the ATtiny202. Now, the first thing we want to look at is the speed grade. Now, this is, on paper, it's a 5-volt device. You can run it at lower voltages, but you might not get the same speeds. So here we see, to get the 20 megahertz maximum speed, we need at least 4.5 volts. We don't have that. We're probably looking at about 3.2 to 4.2. So we're going to go to 10 megahertz. So we'll, let's remember that when we set this up. Okay, let's get rid of this. And we are going to need a few other things. Include AVR sleep mode. Include AVR interrupt. So we're going to use both of those things. Now we need to define the CPU frequency that if we use any delay functions, which I don't think we need for this. 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So 10 megahertz. Uh, yeah. Now, if we did want a, a delay function, we could do, or I'm sorry, not define. We could do include utilities, util slash delay. If you do this, you have to define the, the frequency of the CPU before you include this. Otherwise, this will get the default value and it won't work correctly. You'll have the wrong speed. I don't think we need, well, we, I don't know. Well, if we need if we, if we need the delay function, then, then we need it. All right, so let's go here. This will execute first no matter what. If we don't do function prototypes, we'll have to put those above main. As you mentioned, we want to have a slower speed. Okay, CCP, which is the Change Protection Control Register. We need to put D8 into it. This will give us, I think, two or three clock cycles to change something in. So we're going to want clock, control, to boom, and master clock, control, B. And we want that to equal, well, what do we want it to equal? Let's go to the data sheet. Actually, let's, let's cheat. We got this. Hit that. Go to the data sheet. Search, which is really slow in Acrobat. 
Okay. Ah, here we go. Here, let's look what's inside this register. All right, so there's an enable. So that enables the prescaler or the divider, which we want. And then there's the division amount, right? So we need to at least set the, the LSB. So we're going to say this is one, and then we're going to or it with whatever the divisor amount is, which I don't think, I think would actually just be zero. Yeah, we want to divide it from 20 down to two. So that would be a value of zero. So we don't actually have to put anything in, but let's say we did, let's say we needed to put one in. We'll see how this is, um, the LSB is P enabled, which means whatever this value is like nine AB zero, we have to bit shift it one to the left. So let's say it was one, we would have to do one bit shift one. Again, we don't need to do that. So we'll just actually, we can just set this to be one. Okay, so divide clock by default rate of two equals 10 megahertz. This does have some similarities to newer ARM chips. We have to wait for it to sync. I just grab that there. Okay, now, oh crap, I left my, uh, my diagram down in the basement. I'll be right back. Let's create two functions. Let's do wake tasks and sleep tasks. We'll use these to initialize the system. Well, we won't, we'll actually initialize the system and it'll, it'll boot up in sleep state. But once it calls wake tasks, that will do the things that we need to actually run the pins. All right, so what do we got for pins? I'll put the image up on the screen. Now we have two pins that are being used as general purpose input output. We've got PA7 and PA2. This port A dir. This sets the direction of the pins. Now this is going to be an 8-bit register because it's an 8-bit microcontroller. And I'm going to do this in binary so it's easier to see. So PA7, which is the MSB, that's the FET control. That's an output. So we'll set that as 1. And 6 is six is the speaker, so that's also 1. Now some microcontrollers, you don't have to set the output direction on pins. Let's see, clock is also out. 6, 7... Five, four, don't exist. Three is the clock output, so that's a one. Sensor, which is PA2, is an input, so that's a zero. Data, which is PA1, is an output, and there is no PA0. All right. Set pin directions when active. And we, when we put this thing to sleep, we'll set all these to zero, which means for the MOSFET control, there's a pull-down pull resistor, which will ensure the MOSFET is off when these pins are tri-state. Okay, we're also going to want the SPI bus, serial peripheral interface. SPI bus instance zero control A equals, we want master mode, master bit mask. So that's the bit mask, not the bit position. If you did bit position like that, you'd actually have to use it differently where you'd have to take one and put it into the bit position, but bit mask works because I just, well, here, we can actually just go to implementation and we'll see that, how that's defined. Easy peasy. All right. So we set it to master mode and we also enable it. So that's spy enable bit mask position, start spy device. Okay, and also when we turn the system on, we want to turn on the MOSFET. So again, that's PA7. So on this particular microcontroller, we can do that atomically. See, in the old ones, you'd have to do something like, like port A or equals one bit shift seven. But this one allows for atomic operations. So we can go port A out set, which means turn, turn this bit to a one. And then we could actually just give it the bit mask position, which is, oh, I'm sorry, which is, sorry, I just had a brain fart, which is eight. Set fat on high. And also turn, like do a wake flag, which we'll need later. Default is off. All right, so now we need to set a rising edge interrupt. So let's go into the data sheet. Port. This again, this works a little differently than the older ones. So, <laughs> and this part's a little weird. See how it has pin zero to pin seven control? 
So our switch is on PA2, the sensor. So that's pin to control. Of course, these are all going to have the same thing. So we can invert the input, we can enable a pull up, and then we can also set an interrupt type using the, the, lower, the lowest two bits. So we don't need a pull up because we're just connecting it directly to VCC. But we're going to be looking for rising edge, which is 2. So what we need to do is put a 2 in this value. So import A in pin control 2, set it to 0, 02. Set PA2 as rising edge interrupt. Now, something that makes the uh, sometimes makes development obtuse is knowing what the uh, ISR definitions are. So sometimes you have to like poke around or look for examples. So in this case, it's ISR port A port vector. So this will happen on any rising edge interrupt. So if you had multiple interrupts, you'd have to do logic in this function here to figure out which one had actually been triggered. But in our case, there's only one. So at the end, no matter what, at the end, we want to do int flags, and then we're going to clear it. Clear interrupt flag. Because if we don't do that, the interrupt will re-trigger. Is actually, let's create another variable. Sleep state equals one. Actually, we don't need to do that because we'll do that in a function. So down here, if sleep state, oops, I did the wrong, wrong birdie. So we disable the sleep state. Wake up flag equals one. It's best to do as little as possible in, in the interrupt. So we'll just set those flags. Uh, yeah, and then we might do a timer. I'll, I'll come back to that later. So what we need to do here in the main loop, the main loop will be kind of like a state machine. If, if sleep state. So is this thing asleep or has the flag been set to put it to sleep? Sleep. CPU, that's a built-in function that'll put it to sleep. Else, if wake flag, does that, so that means, oh, did we, were we woken up and we need to perform tasks to wake up? We will go to wake tasks. Okay, and wake tasks should actually clear the wake flag. So let's go back up here and set this to zero. Okay, and if we're not in a waking up, uh, then this is a normal operation. This is where we run our, our cat deterrent code. Okay, before we can put the thing to sleep, we have to enable sleep mode. Now, this doesn't put it to sleep. It gives it the ability to go to sleep. So this is sleep controller, slip control, control A. So the mode that we want is power down, sleep enabled, which is the deepest sleep. But we can wake from it using an external interrupt i.e. the vibration sensor, and then we'll also need to enable it with the LSB. So we'll shift those bits around just like we did. I, th you can, I think you can either do period or you can also do underscore. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so in this case, it, we want it to equal. So we want sleep type 2. We have to bit shift, bit shift that 1 to the left and then or it with 1. Set deep sleep mode and enable sleep actually sleep tasks we should i think go to sleep would be a better name for that because if it's tasks then that implies that we're going to be uh, calling it over and over which we're not all right so up and go to sleep sleep state equals one and we're going to disable the spy controller to make sure that we save as much power as possible because just having the spy controller on actually consumes more power than, well, not having it on. <laughs> Port A dir all inputs. And then finally, we're going to enable interrupts with that command. So what will happen is we'll set up just the bare minimum. So sleep mode and the interrupt pin. Then we'll go to sleep, which clears everything else. Once we fall into the loop here, since sleep state has been set to 1, the CPU will immediately go to sleep. Now when the interrupt triggers, this code will process... And then the CPU will resume operation right here after this command, which means, well, actually, it would fall through once and then it would come back around. Oh, now sleep state is zero. Then we'd end up here. 
wake flag, then we would do the wake tasks that would turn on everything we need. And then on the next go round, then we can actually do our normal operation. So I like to do it like this, where it's like a little state machine. We could have also used like a switch case statement. Okay, so this will turn on the fat, which will allow the lights to work. So let's let's drive the LEDs first. Okay, let's go send spy. Unt the data. Let's see how she chooches. Spy is easier to use than falling off a log. So we just put the data in the register and then it will be sent out. That's really all there is to it. Let me just grab this function. And yes, of course I have the code already open in another monitor so I can do this as easily as possible and look like a genius. Back in my home country, I was regarded as a genius. But now I am outlawed in the world of science, which previously hailed me as its master. But I will show the world that I am all right. I will create a race of atomic super beans who will conquer the world. Here we are. This is your typical APA 102 uh, LED. That means it has clock and data. It's not a NeoPixel, which is good because we can. it makes it a lot easier to, to drive. Okay, so each... LED needs uh, four bytes of data. So there's RGB, although notice how B and blue and red are backwards. Then there's three bits and a global illumination value. So you send out 32 zeros, then you send out however many lights worth of data. In this case, it's 18. And then you send out 32 ones. And then these bits here, that's kind of like the leader bit that uh, that tells that tells the system or tells the LEDs that there's some data incoming i'll just call it lights and I, I think we're just going to have the same color i mean i kind of just picture these being white right i i don't know uh, what, what colors do cats not like cat can cats even see color i don't know i thought about using one of those uh, leds from the projectors the one that i took apart but i think that might be a little too much right so let's do this let's make another function call it frame and then it will have a value and in frame we are going to send four bytes as we talked about send spy value all right so we talked about how to do the lights, we first, we first need to send four bytes of all zeros. So we'll do frame and then we'll send zero, zero. Then we'll do 18 lights. There are 18 lights. I totally am not the same character in the movies as I was in the show. And by the show, I mean the next generation, not that thing that's on Paramount Plus. Where are you taking this thing? <laughs> All right, so we need to send, um, uh, what would that be? E0. Oh, and there needs to be a brightness too. So if we make it full bright, that would be 32. So actually we would just send FF, I guess. And then we send the color, which I guess would just be white, wouldn't it? Yeah, so we could just send either a zero or one for the color. So it's either on or off. We'll just make it flash. And I don't know. I mean, if I had to guess, if a cat's can see a color, it would be green because of like leaves and, and evolution and hunting, just like humans. There's our ending 32 bits. All right, so we just basically call this once and this all happens automatically. So if we wake up, let's do this. Let's do for int x equals blah, blah, blah. I don't, let's do 10 flashes. So we're gonna do lights, full bright. And the MOSFET should be on. So then we'll do, I think I will use the delay function. Delay milliseconds, uh, 50. All right, so we'll do that. And then we will go to sleep again. All right, so if this works, we'll boot this up. It'll wait for that switch to be triggered. 
then it'll drop out of this, it'll flash the lights, and then it'll go back to sleep. So let's uh, let's see if it works. Meow, I'm Bud. <laughs> ah! It's quite bright, but it only flashed once. So I'm not sure if this is sensitive enough. Oh, it might help if the lights turned on and off. No wonder I couldn't see a change. Let's try that again. Meow, I'm Bud. Ah! <laughs> You're under arrest, Bud. Maybe I should make like cop car lights. Well, I can try to make it physically more sensitive later. I'll just get the code working for now. All right, now we got the speakers, so now let's set up something to make some noise. I added a pin toggle in the loop. Okay, so the speaker is working. Now, obviously that's very low frequency, but we're not gonna bit bang it, we're gonna use a hardware timer. So we need to use the B timer because it's the only one connected to the pin that we can use. So we got control A of that timer, run in standby. Okay, well we're gonna be in deep sleep mode, which means this timer will be disabled when we go to sleep. So we don't actually have to disable it when we go to sleep because it can't work while we're asleep. Enable clock select. Okay, so let's let's do uh, main system clock divided by two. So that'd be five megahertz. T C B zero dot control A equals one bit shift one or one. So clock div two source enable timer. All right, we need to connect this to a pin. How do we do that? The output will go high when the counteractive starts. I think this is it. Look, it doesn't have to be nice. It doesn't have to be a nice sound. It just has to be an annoying sound. And ideally, I'll probably just dial it in until I can't hear it anymore, kind of like the CRT whine in that episode that everyone complained about. Because if I can't hear it, that means the cat can. Until Bud becomes an old cat. I'm old, Peter. I don't think I've used TCB to operate a pin before. I'm gonna to have to read this microchip manual. Yes, they have the data sheets, and then they also have manuals that help you get started. Uh, yes, I need a cat frequency. I better call Jackson Galaxy. Disable the peripheral, write capture compare register, write to the count register, re-enable the module. These saw teeth represent the number rising. So when it goes up to the compare, it toggles the pin, toggles the pin, toggles the pin, which is represented by this waveform here. I used this timer in my MGC project, but I used it as a frame, a frame counter, not a, not a PWM output. So in control register B, we need to enable compare and then have the 8-bit PWM for the counter mode. Ah, in 8-bit mode, this register acts as two different registers. It acts as the compare register and the the reset register so to speak as you can see here so see how the high the high byte is the point at which it turns off and the low byte is the total count time which would be ff so we would do 80 and ff to make it 50 percent duty cycle in 8-bit uh, mode there's combination registers like ccmp but then there's also um you can also do them atomically like here we go ccmp there should be also a low and a high version of it. Yeah, there is. Uh, I think I prefer to do it that way. Yeah, so the low would be FF, TC, B0, uh, compare, CC, MP. This is often so obtuse. So that would be a 50% duty cycle. So if you wanted like a 10% duty cycle, it would be uh, 255 times 0.1. Why am I even doing the calculator for that? It would be 25. Uh, yeah, that would give you a 10% duty cycle, for instance. But let's just do 80 for starters. Or, I'm sorry, 50%. What's that give us? 19 kilohertz? Yeah, I can't hear that. I think that's beyond the hearing range of a 46-year-old man. Yeah, I googled it. Uh, I shouldn't be able to hear this because I'm not a three-year-old. But if I divide the CPU again, I'd probably be able to hear it. I did test it at 19. Bud did react to it. He could hear it. Although he didn't seem like he was scared of it. But maybe combined with the lights, I'm hoping. 
But worst case, at least this is a demonstration on how to get started with the AT Tiny Zero series. I can just see the thumbnail now. Totally didn't work as a cat deterrent, but how to get started with the AT Tiny Zero series. So before I design a wooden book to put this in, I want to make sure that it works or maybe works. So I just stood it in there and I taped the LEDs to Law and Order Justice is Served PC game. What can I say? I like Law and Order. Of course it has, it's the uh, Jeremy Orbach and, uh, oh, what's the guy's name from Rent? Uh, well, it turned on, but he doesn't seem to have cared. But, oh, where is it? Is it over there? Get it! Get it, bud! Get it! Oh, it didn't even trigger! I need like a... I need like an IR thing. Get it, bud! Get it! Get it! Oh, I had to break out the beef jerky. Go get him, boy! What? Little Timmy's in the well? Yeah, bud, pretend it's uh, 8.30 and I haven't woken up yet. And you're knocking things off the shelf, trying to get me to come out and give you food. Or attack my jacket. Oh, but I looked it up. It's Jesse, Jesse L. Martin. Yeah, so my favorite episodes. He did it, but he didn't care. Yeah, the Jerry Orbach, Jesse L. Martin, and then who's the blonde woman? Uh, Elizabeth Rom, yes. Those were my favorite episodes. And of course, Sam Waterston. I did a test earlier and Bud turned his head. He could hear the speaker turn on. That's before I attached the lights. But it doesn't seem to care. I mean, what I've done in the past is I'll put panther tape like right here, you know, but then what's the point of having a bookshelf? Although it's not like I, oh, I need to install a uh, battlefield two. You know, it's not like, oh no, I triggered it. All right, be bad and go and be bad. It's like nine o'clock. You're not supposed to be doing that. Have you reprogrammed your circadian rhythm? Yeah, you're supposed to be in sleep mode right now. It's nine o'clock. All right, I'll give you one more chance. Be bad. Be bad. It's like when they try to get po Pinocchio to smoke a cigar and he walks away. I'd like to leave this here overnight and see what he does in the morning, but I think he'd probably try to chew on those LEDs with current going through them, which wouldn't be a good thing. It could cause a fire, possibly, or maybe give him a little bit of a shock. Also, it doesn't seem to be working, so I don't see the point in building a book around it, so... I think I might have to chalk this up to a fail. Look at your primordial pouch! That's where you store all your precious cat goo. Look what he did! Bud! You're destroying my creation! Well, the project didn't work as intended. Bud didn't seem to care about it at all. But it was a good way to talk about getting started with the new AT Tiny Zero series, especially low power mode and interrupts. I thought I would just kind of go over this really briefly. So there's a Zero series, a One series, and a Two series. I'm here on DigiKey. I typed in AT Tiny into the search and see these three here Tiny Zero One Two. Let's see what's in stock. The dirty little secret is, if you need a bunch of MOSFETs and Ford needs a bunch of MOSFETs, guess who gets them first? Spoiler warning, it's not you. Uh, oh, 402's got decent stock, 9,800. So that would be the 4K version of the chip we use in this project. It's going to be like Mad Max with micro microcontrollers. I hope no one goes into my basement. You know, oh, it could, I could, it could be like, it could be like Mad Max Fury Road. I could have these levers and I could push them and like a few microcontrollers would come out and I would be like, do not grow too addicted to microcontrollers. 90% of using a site like this is just knowing what to call things. Yeah, so you've got the 202 and then you've got the 1624. So the 16 and the 4 refer to the memory size and the 2 refers to the device series. So if we look at a 1626, even that's not that much money. Look, that's still, look at that. It's a dollar oh two compared to AT Tiny 85. What's an AT Tiny 85 versus a dollar 54. Mm -hmm. In this diagram, we see that the leading digit is how much flash there is. 48, 1632. 
then the center digit is the series. The, the uh, last digit is how many pins it has. Well, not how many pins it has, but it's a reference number to how many pins it has. And then typically the RAM also doubles with the flash. Well, this is weird. The one series has a DAC in it and also a peripheral touch controller, but the two series does not. So it looks like the two series is mostly about having the largest possible amount of RAM. So I guess instead of a AT Tiny, they're calling it a Tiny A VR. All right, so if we type in that, we get embedded microcontrollers. Then we get these three in stock. Ha ha ha. Hit apply all. There's our selection. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, learning how to get started with a small new microcontroller. It didn't stop Bud from messing up my shelves, but I haven't given up. I also want to, I want to make some more cat gadgets, maybe something that he can knock over and then it puts itself back up like a ball on a post. Maybe that toy already exists. I don't know. So yeah, just uh, stay tuned for more electronics and cat projects. And of course, Menard's junk.